we go. A little red. What is that? Sweet. <laughs> little redfish. First one of the day. The cool thing about the Everglades is there's so much diversity here. You can catch these. You can catch snook. You can catch tarpon on a good day. The farther you go back, you find largemouth, I'm guessing, too. Like more freshwater species. First fish of the morning. Probably going to get a lot more. That's cool. There we go. Trout. <laughs> We're just talking about trout. A little speckled trout on the scrizamp. Two fish, two different species. I have a very strong feeling we're gonna fall in love with this place today. Peace out, brother. <laughs> Dude, she clapped. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's a, that's a nice redfish. Snook. Dude, so sick. <laughs> it might be smaller than my biggest. <laughs> Oh my goodness, dude. I think the craziest thing about these little snook is their lateral line, which they use, right? Yeah, for that's their sense of feeling. Yeah, it's not just for looks, it's definitely a, a killing tool. They feel that vibration in the water, they key in on it, and they crush. Of course, this is very small, but it's neat to catch a little one. And that's our third species of the day. Oh, he's showing. Sweet. Well, can only get better. Oh, well, gang, welcome back to another episode. Today's scenery is looking a little bit different. We are fishing a place that I've always wanted to fish. Ever since I was a kid, I've heard about this very spot, but I've never had the chance to fish it until today. We are in the Everglades. We started off with sharks. We did some canal bass fishing and even crossed off that, that legendary bowfin. But now we are in like arguably one of the most diverse ecosystems in the entire United States. And we're doing it with one of Alex's buddies. Captain Jesse's back there gonna be showing us this beautiful place. We're gonna be learning some of his tricks and some of his methods of catching fish out of here. And the one cool thing about the Everglades that I like so much is it's a little bit of the best of both worlds. A little bit of freshwater and also a little bit of saltwater. So we had the opportunity to catch snook, tarpon, redfish, speckled trout. Like, I mean, honestly, anything, but what are some of the other big ones that you're thinking of? Jacks. Your ladyfish. Um, those are kind of the main. You, know, you got the main four, which would be. Oops, got a fish. Almost. But he just swings on a giant red. Little uh, goliath entry. groupers we can get yep, too. Got a lot of little, little grouper. Oh yeah, I got. That would be insane. Yeah, I got smokes. You got a fish? <laughs> yeah, I had a fish. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I switched off the camera so Alex could fish while I do the intro. And of course, Buddy's getting lit up back there. But anyway, this is gonna be a sick episode. Hope you guys enjoy. Like I said, the goal for today: see how many species we can catch, and then from there, maybe get some giants. So stick with it. Stay tuned and enjoy. Oh. That's a fish right there, what is that? That was sweet. <laughs> that was pretty cool. It's a pretty good one too. <laughs> That's like Louisiana, man. That's like, like, oh, the real epic. There you go, come on, buddy. He likes to get on the underside of the boat for sure. Come on, come on. Dirty. Oh, tail. Dirty. <laughs> oh, that was sweet. I gotcha. Woo wee. That was so cool. It's so funny how different colored these guys are compared to the ones we were catching in uh, southern Texas. Silver, like very gray, almost platinum. That was like my first actual sight fish of the day, and it's a pretty solid redfish, my biggest one in the Everglades. So sick, man. So intense, using like a seven foot rod and just sight casting a redfish cruising along. Buddy had no idea what was about to hit him. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> ah, I love redfish. That was sweet. We just moved up on this flat. We're trying to sight cast them. And I think Jesse was like, yeah, just throw a few blind casts out there. My first blind cast, I catch one. How insane is that? We saw like, we spooked like three or four redfish, good ones. And then my first just, do you think so? One of the ones we spooked? That's so funny. He clobbered it, dude. Clobbered it, oh, nice one. Why about the size of the uh, last one I caught? God, they, they just go so hard, man. 
There's no quitting with these dudes. I got you. Ooh, sporting the dorsal. <laughs> Love it, man. These things crank it. Check it out. Is that number four? That's number four. Number four of the day. Nice redfish. Just straight crushing. We're actually doing the weedless shrimp now. He really liked that. Back he goes. Oh, hell yeah. Sick. Something else popped out right there. Yeah. There we go. That was epic. Holy sh**. <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> that was so sick. Oh my god, get out from under the boat. Do you find that they do that a lot? Yeah. A lot of the redfish I've caught go under the boat. Like they make it very uncomfortable as, uh, as an angler. <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah, that's a solid one. Very solid one. Oh my gosh. You guys, my shrimp is gone. I think he had it for a while. <laughs> Jesus. You got those pliers with you. I might need to play surgery on this dude. Redfish number five for the day. Yes, nice and fat. Okay, yep, that's enough of that. I'm really uh, I'm learning how uh, unskilled I am at holding slimy guys. <laughs> Another one, that was so sick. Oh wow, look at all that stuff going on up there. Pretty good one too. And they are hard to see though. They their their color is so weird here. There's one. Oh my god, there he is. Oh my god, that's a nice one. Yeah. Oh he's now he's gone. There he is. No one. Nope, it wasn't too high. He ate it. That was sweet. I did not see him eat it, I just saw the fish. <laughs> so cool. That right there would be redfish number six. six. Number six. Oh, he just popped right out. There we go. There we go. He was messing with it, I think. I felt like a few taps before that. <laughs> oh, cool. Little guy. What's what's below a rat? Is it a mouse red? <laughs> oh, red ski number seven of the day. This little rat red here. Or as uh, I like to call them mouse red because they're so little. Number seven. Okay. There he goes. Oh, what? Yeah, that's a fish. Where? I can see that. 12? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tail? Right there to the yeah, left? Right there, yeah, 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 I do see him. Is it off to the right? Uh -huh. All the way over there, right? Yeah, he's now, he's that, now he's moving, yeah. Drop it. Switch. He's on, he's on, he's on. He's on. Yeah. Got him. There we go, that was sweet. That was sweet. <laughs> so cool, man. So cool, dude. Sight casting these guys. Wow. Wow. This place is awesome. This place is just awesome. Yeah, we're under the boat. Yeah, do your thing, whatever. Oh, wow. Just had a super legit sight eat there. Very far cast. I don't know how I pulled that off, but I guess a little bit of beginner's Everglades luck came in handy there. That's redfish number eight. Redfish are definitely chomping today. Blows me away how different these fish look compared to the ones I've caught in Louisiana and uh, Texas. 
So dirty, dirty, man. He's pooped. Oh, what was that? Where, 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 where? Where? No. Yeah. Yep. Okay. No. Up on the bank? Towards that tip. The tip way down there. Perfect. Stop, stop, stop. Now reel in quick, 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 as fast as you can. Now stop. Oh, there he is. I see him. Oh, f me. I see him now. There he goes. Look at him go. That's a snook right there. Wow. Good one, too, right? Yeah, that's a good one. Wow. That right there is the fish that we're primarily after. I've never caught a, a big snook in my entire life. And um, yeah, wicked. Probably a harder fish to catch than the red, I'm guessing. A little more spooky. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. Okay, well, there we go. But yeah, that's sweet. It's a big one. I could not see him for the life of me. I don't know what was wrong with me. That glare. Yeah. Damn it. That's cool, though. Yeah. You want to grab that from me? Yeah. We got the hold of we're not only catching some fish, but we're learning the history of the Everglades. He hasn't like fully gone into explaining this because I wanted to save it for the camera. But it sounds like this place, which is Watson's place, or Watson Place, has a little bit of history. Um, that's his house, I'm guessing? Or plenty of just go block. Yeah. Okay, so explain this real quickly. Yeah, back in, I think, I want to say it was like the 1700s, this guy lived out here. And you can see some of his old farming equipment. This is so he lived weird. out here, totally self-sufficient. In the park left it this way now it's a designated campsite so a lot of people camp right here in the middle so this is before obviously the state of florida maintained the everglades yeah. and kept it like yeah a very I think probably before it became a national park national park so this is way long ago where i guess you could live out in the everglades and this dude was a serial killer yeah so a serial killer lived right here and now they thought hey let's turn it into a nice little picnic area <laughs> where you can where you can light a fire and sing some camp songs who the hell? I mean, this this is, looks like a giant used to be a cult, like a cult for for having fires. Yeah, you know it's all. And that's probably what's left of this chimney, maybe, or some sort of foundation. Yeah, but well, they probably wanted to put it here because it was already cleared. I mean, I guess that makes sense. But I don't know. It was like the, out of all the camping spots that you could pick up on the Everglades, probably the last one on my list. All the campsites are taken except this one. Be like, you know, I'm just gonna go back on. Go to the hotel. That's pretty cool though. He's like, we drove past it. And Jesse's like. You heard about this? And I'm like, no. So I figured I'd share it with you guys. So we're staying on the soil of uh, a killer, basically. I, the Everglades, I'm sure there's some crazy stuff that goes on back here. Just look it up on a map, like right now. Pause the video, go to Google, look up the Everglades on a map, and you realize how dense this place is. I mean, this is probably just one of the lures that you can hear about back in this vast uh, ecosystem forest. It's cool, man. Not only is it known for fishing, but it sounds like there's some pretty crazy history behind this, uh, this zone. The Everglades is wicked, dude. I'm loving it so far. Just thought I'd share this with you, though. Oh, and we lost Jesse. Like, the backcountry is all about fishing the windy sides. Want I want wind. Oh, yeah. Might be the only angler that's ever said that. That's that wants wind, I know. Going to which way left? Slow. Sorry. Big snook. I didn't see him. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> way more snook back here. Oh wow! Oh yeah, big hookups. <laughs> you got a you got a fish tank? <laughs> Jesse's like, I've caught hundreds of forty-inch snook in my truck. I've caught hundreds of ten-inch snook in my truck. <laughs> Look at that thing! That is so freaking cute. That's like probably eleven inches. Broad lines when they're very tiny like that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice 
Smoke. Sassy little dudes. That was cool. Is that a barracuda? It is. Is that uncommon? Really? I would have thought this was normal if Jesse didn't just tell me it was completely uncommon, but what we have here is another species to rack up on the Everglades score. I guess there's barracuda back here. Ooh, teeth, bro. I'm not done. You. The farther we move back into the Everglades, the crazier it starts to look. I honestly feel like I'm in the Amazon. Like if you were to blindfold me, take me on a plane and drop me right here, I'd have like no doubt that we were in somewhere Brazil on the Amazon River, but this is the Everglades. This is kind of how I pictured it to be. And Jesse was just saying that he agreed as so as well. Like if this is just like dense, thick stuff and you really get the feel that you're kind of the only ones out here, which it's pretty much true. So the farther we move into the back country of the Everglades, the fresher the water is gonna get. And again, this is everything that Jesse explained to me and the possibilities of catching largemouth go up, snook go up, and then you might even find some crazy colored out redfish as well. But this is wild, man. I truly never even thought I'd make it here. Uh, it's been a lifelong dream for me to come and fish the Everglades and just experience it. I don't even care if we catch anything big today. It's just cool to be in such a, I don't know, such a well-known spot. I've heard so many people talk about the Everglades, but never, of course, gotten the chance to fish it myself until today. I mean, this is, this is nuts. We're just idling through an epic spot. Two of them. Got him. Oh, we got a red. Roya? Is that a red? No, that's a shark. That's a red. That's a red? Wait, what? It is a red. Dude, I am being so confused right now. We were just trying to sight fish a little bull shark. And I go to lift up my Oh, there's sharks going after him. Oh my god, this is crazy. Oh boy. Oh my god, that got a little weird. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, dude, he's so colored out. Oh my God, I'm so glad I got this one because he's so different looking than the ones we were catching earlier. Dude, that was so strange. I don't know what exactly just went down there, but we saw like four little bull sharks. We're like, all right, let's keep ourselves busy, try to cast at one. We had one chase it all the way down, and I was like, ah, oh, you might eat. I felt the thump, set the hook. I thought it was the bull shark, which is right there, by the way. There he goes. Look how much different colored this one is because of the fact that we're so far into the back country. Just red, I mean, this is what, a, in my opinion, a redfish normally looks like. At least the ones I'm used to catching in Louisiana. Really dirty. <laughs> you almost was shark bait, too. <laughs> cool. Ooh. Anything else? Want some chips? I would love some salt and vinnies. Yes, I am. What a candid moment. So, we've worked the Everglades pretty pretty hard today. Caught a lot of species, some species we didn't think we were gonna catch. We've really run through the glades. We're still after a few different species, one of which being the tarpon, which is kind of the harder one to catch, wouldn't you agree? Like, especially right, right, right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jesse is on um, full tarpon stocking mode. I've tried my best, you know, which isn't much, but I've tried my best at trying to catch these guys just now, and man, do they swerve you hard. They don't like the Midwestern angler vibe. So Jesse's giving her a, a go. Oh, I'm sorry, I left a, a huge point out. That being, we're seeing them. Tarpon are air breathers, similar to gar, sturgeon, a few other different species. They let you know that they're there, basically, before you catch them. So they're coming up, grabbing air, and they're doing it like every five seconds. So there's just a ton here, and they're not eating. They're not being cooperative. Like, if you had to guess, like 20, 30? Here? Yeah. A lot more. A lot more, he said. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, a part of the, the game. One day they could be just red hot and the other could be cold as titties. But yeah, day's coming to a, a slow end. It's been absolutely unreal. Caught more snook than I have in my entire life. Caught a lot of redfish. Got to see a place that I've always wanted to see as a kid. And of course, first and foremost, huge shout out to Jesse for showing us around here. Buddy's been push pulling my dumb ass around all day. I will admit, I got in a few trees. 
but yeah, he's an awesome guy and really knows what's up. Really helped me learn this place to the best of his ability. And I just, I've, I've just never thought it would be like this. I mean, I pictured it like this, but I didn't think the fishing was gonna be like this, you know, working the seams, the edges, how you can find deep water and shallow water and clear water and dirty water. It's a little bit of everything. It's like, um, I don't know, it's like a Neapolitan fishery. You get the best of all the worlds. Now, I mentioned these things slap hard as tits, like Salt and Vinny Crispins by Ritz. So good. Like the whole thing? It, yeah, grab the freaking tender, man. Whole tendy? Yeah, the whole tendy. Is it okay that they're cold buff tendies? Big Al over here has been talking up these Publix Buffalo tenders all damn trip. You just couldn't shut up about them yesterday, so we're about to learn what the hype is. Mmm. Oh, man, that's quite legit. Yeah. He's got good taste. That's one thing that Alex never lets me down on, is just the food and the editing. Those are two things you can always count on Alex to, to provide. So yeah, this is life, bro. to a ridiculously good day on the Everglades. Oh my gosh. Claws all around. Claws. Ding. You know, we don't have Corona, so we're just gonna rock some claws as a celebratory drink for today's Everglades mission. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Truly never thought I'd get a chance to fish such a legendary place. If you guys have never fished the Everglades, you have to check it out. And if you do check it out, I highly recommend linking up with the guy that we fished today, his name is Jesse. I'll leave his guide service link down below. Really cool dude. I feel like he really went out of his way to put us on the fish. Uh, I think one of the coolest parts uh, about fishing with Jesse is that he made it very clear that he just enjoys watching other people catch fish. Uh, what was the total species count? Redfish, barracuda, snook, trout. Am I missing one? No, you caught a couple ladyfish, but I mean, we don't. Yeah, I shook off the ladyfish. So I guess technically I caught like five different species and then we caught over 30 fish. It was a really insane day. The unfortunate part is we were gonna fish uh, tomorrow, but take a listen to this. She is straight dumping out there right now. So I don't know exactly what the game plan is. If we don't fish tomorrow, we'll at least get a chance to fish the next day. Can't really fish in the thunder and the lightning. Uh, even the rain is kind of tough to fish in when you've uh, got all the camera gear. But I just figured this would be a nice little spot, little moment for me to close out today's video and say thank you guys so much for watching. Again, huge shout out to Jesse. If you guys want to fish the glades, be sure to link up with him. He's got a sweet boat. He really knows what he's doing. He brought us into the thick today. We were all the way in the back. Yeah, just casting at some really epic fish. Once in a lifetime fishery, no doubt. As you can see, I'm tired. I'm totally rambling. I'm peace and not signing it. We will catch you guys on the next episode, whether it be tomorrow or the next day, we're gonna figure it out. We're definitely gonna fish. We just need to kind of get around this whole weather situation. But I appreciate the view. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop. Boys. Oh, that's so sick. <laughs> that was so sick, boys. <laughs>